I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing: I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now, just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. The working man is a sucker. Hey everybody, welcome back to Working Class Halls Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's Edward, up, buddy? How hello. you doing, dude? I'm good. Yeah, it's good. All right, let me ask you something. I got some. When you were a boy. A wee boy. A wee Irish Italian boy <laughs> in the shit streets of Philadelphia. <laughs> Suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever... Pr- do, do you ever play pretend with the neighborhood kids and have a pretend girlfriend? Ooh, a pretend girlfriend? Yes. Oh, I don't think so. I had to pretend, uh, like we used to play guns. Okay. Like when we were like 10, like everybody had guns and we would play like, yeah. That checks uh, out. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. No, I was not. I, I don't know what's sadder. What the, <laughs> a pretend girlfriend? Well, I bring- or like being a pretend like military kid, you know? <laughs> what is <laughs> pretending you're a jarhead all day? Oh, dude, yeah, we would hide. We would Marching. like. We would get like. We would do a little bit of the. the oh shit! The, the camo, black, the camo. And, and hide out in backyards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better than what I'm about to admit. Okay. <laughs> so I was fuck. I was like the thinking about you know my childhood and what to talk about here. I was just going over memories like I do before every show. I. <laughs> I come from a, a super young family. Like my mom was eighteen when she oh, had me. Yeah, yeah. Her, she had a sister. Her youngest sister, I and mean, she's the second oldest of six. My mother, and the youngest child is, was her sister. She was twelve when I was born. She oh, was wow. kind of like an older sister to me when yeah, I was a kid. Right. So when I was like five or six, I had been going through. You know, I live with my grandmother, like a lot of us did. So I was going through her old shit, and I found this life-size doll. I don't know, in the 70s, I must have met some doll. Like, it was a, a female doll with, like, baby bump titties. Like, I don't know why they gave it, like, a training. I I don't know what the deal was. Was it like the... It was um, tall, though. It was like almost as tall as me. But, like, what, what was that horror show, the Annabelle doll? Was it, like, one of those kind of dolls? It was definitely a freaky-looking doll. Uh-huh. And, uh... So you found it in the attic? I, I, no, no, no. I found it in some fucking closet in the back and I pull it out <laughs> with like a, bottle, no one would wa- with like I mean, a bottle of lube I'm sure they, I'm sure people would watch like I'm sh- my grandmother used to babysit me a lot but I wasn't really like now that I have a son I think it's a combo of a, of a lot of things like people being too busy to really pay close attention to me uh, also everyone was working it was also the 80s so there wasn't a lot of like precedent on child yeah, yeah. care yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you just you, you just you were fine They're and fine. i come from yeah, yeah. a dysfunctional place so all those yeah, yeah, things yeah. combined right, right, i'm right. allowed to kind of go about my business uh-huh on my own right and i'm the oldest grandkids so there's not a lot of other grandkids around just me mm-hmm. so i find this doll and i am obviously very fucked up but i can't go into why i'm fucked up <laughs> but i fall in love with this doll basically this doll is like my girlfriend I start living this life for a week when I'm there with this doll, like eating lunch with the doll, laying down with the doll, dry humping the doll. How old are you? I'm probably like five or six. Okay. Uh, So then I take the doll into the front yard because it's the summer. I'm not in school right now, so that's why I have to be there so much. So I take the doll into the front yard and I lay out a blanket. And I put the doll next to me, and I'm laying out like I'm at the beach with the doll. Cars are driving by, and they're going slow. Oh, yeah, dude. (laughs) Like the neighborhood nut job. Yeah, yeah, totally. It it didn't occur to me until recently. My grandmother and grandfather made me come inside. Yeah. And they used to try to hide the doll from me. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I can think about today is like they used to hide that fucking doll. (laughs) I, I was so I had an imaginary friend. I never had an actual like uh, like physical like a doll fake friend. Yeah, I never had a doll. Well, I guess I she had was like a, a blonde. <laughs> the doll kind of looks like my wife. <laughs> do, you, do you think? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I've actually what? dated a number of women that look like that doll. <laughs> Dude, this is like uh, we could submit this to like a psychology. We can get a grant. Maybe we get like a psychology grant from this. Get a little money. They probably put me in a fucking laughing academy. <laughs> <laughs> so you got an imaginary friend. 
Dude, we're gonna tag. We're gonna put like a hashtag. Psychology. I want to find that doll now. Like, yeah, oh. maybe I would get a divorce. What if that would be? <laughs> I get the doll and the get, divorce. And then the that's divorce. key. You keep the house. I get the doll. You keep the kid. You keep the dog. The house. I'll take the doll. I'll finally, be happy. <laughs> finally, <laughs> you see you Full out circle. See you out on Astoria Boulevard. Like with it. Ah, picnic. <laughs> Yo, Josh. Hey. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the, you're like cars are not, not like a subway train. The end train's like slowing down. <laughs> it was a trip, man. People would really. Oh, I bet. It was like a, we had Christmas, like a really good Christmas light set up. Like, you know, oh, people yeah. People yeah. yeah, right. Like, where everyone puts up the lights. Oh, this, oh, I was wow. like the neighborhood. <laughs> but in the middle of July. <laughs> He's just a little boy out there with his doll girlfriend. I'm, I'm leaning over, kissing her and shit. Like, I'm literally doing everything I saw in the movies. Right. And because everyone's younger, they're not yeah, stopping yeah. watching rated R movies. Right, I had right, right. seen nudity on TV by then. I had seen sex on TV by then. So I'm literally doing what adults do with this doll. I remember this. I remember. I remember like being uh, like really into like the Cosmopolitan. I remember finding a Playboy. We were young. It was uh, one of the kids' dads had Playboys, and it was like. I found it, and I knew what it was. I don't know how I knew what it was, but I was probably first grade, second grade. Oh, that's young. Yeah, young. Found a Playboy, and I was like, Shh, and I was paging it. And and a, a kid whose dad it was, we were in, like, in the living room. It was, like, just sitting on it. But I guess that's what Playboy was. Like, you would, you would just have yeah. Playboys out. Yeah, and that anyway, was a weird time where you could so openly weird. have your porn out. Yeah, it was so weird. I remember a lot of kids' yeah. dads would openly have. Just porn mags. Just. Some guys, I come, all right. I always, it's funny. But like Playboy is different than like, Playboy it wasn't like. Was cla- it was like. It was like boobs. Like, it was Cosmo, well, but for a, men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you would see Cosmo would be in the supermarket. Yeah. And that's what I was getting at originally was, I would, I remember being like, ooh, that's like. Yeah. But, and then in my head, I'm like, oh, that's probably because I saw a Playboy really young. Yeah, of course. The funniest thing though about that was I, was, I showed the kid, I was like, oh, dude. I opened it up and the kid just went boobies, <laughs> and the parents all were like, <laughs> and the loser. mom was like, Frank, I told you to put these away. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious so how you were just allowed to have yeah. like right now you'd be considered a sex offender if you had children in the house and you just left your fucking yeah. playboys out. You'd yeah, be yeah. a sex offender. Yeah, I remember in my neighborhood around first grade there was a canyon. It was called Tecolote Canyon, and for a long time, especially through the you know mid to late eighties. CD people would just sleep in the canyon. Okay. Now, San Diego, the weather is like yeah, yeah, campy, yeah. but it's San Diego, so you, you're just drug addicts, you, you just, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot yeah, of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And in my like, there's pockets of where I'm from, like where I grew up, where like this part of it is very much now it's meth, but then it was just like whatever tweak. heroin, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a guy, and my best friend's like, "Hey, I went into the canyon, and this guy gave me these pages of Playboy, and he told me to bring my friends back." Like uh, we didn't know we were being, yeah, right. you know, yeah, yeah, and luckily yeah. we told somebody's mom because my buddy went down there again without me and the dude's like dick was out yeah, and he was yeah. whacking it. And my buddy was like, but he's giving away these free Playboys. You're, yeah, right. Let's go down there. Yeah, like, yeah. And well, I was, there was thinking, let's go get the Playboys. So there was this guy in Philly called Uncle Eddie, Eddie, uh, Eddie Savitz. He, he got arrested. But like for years, you could go and sell him your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> your little boy underwear. Like, well, you would like you would he would buy them off like teenagers or you know like you could be twenty years old like we would go and get drugs and like we never did I've never I didn't know anybody that ever sold it but there was like people we knew people but it had to be worn and used right used that underwear. was the whole point yeah yeah, yeah. you could tell Scott your underwear <laughs> you have to take it off in front of him <laughs> I don't so think so legit, I, I think like, you could certificate just pull, of authenticity I think you just pull up and I feel like it was like a bag and like a brown paper bag you'd hang it out the window and you'd be like that's good. <laughs> Right, <laughs> checking the goods. So uh, the f- for Eddie those- Savitt, Uncle Eddie, his name was. He got he got for, arrested years those- ago. Well, yeah, you mean I can't wait to hear what he got arrested for. Let me take a guess. Sex offender, sex offender. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's how the story got out. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think those kind of people that are in? Because I've met some dudes that like to smell some dirty panties. Dude. It's about the stench, right? Oh, I don't know, man. It, it's just made me gag a little bit. Isn't that weird? I don't get like, that gets at people all. Going. Yeah. Holy shit. Who knows, smelling man. people's underwear. Yeah, not a thing. I'm not, I'm not really into like smelly things. I don't like. Yeah, I don't want to know about that nah. stuff. While okay, 
I will put my mouth anywhere, though. I mean, I guess. You, come on, dude. You're a dirtbag. You can put your mouth anywhere. You ain't. Oh, as long as it smells anywhere's, hygienic, you're putting... Anywhere's a big word. I mean, butt, if I'm, the butthole, the tape, if I'm the with somebody, vulva. It depends on the, yeah, with my wife, the sure. Inner, yeah, right, okay. The inner pink. Uh-huh. The inner pink. <laughs> you're going mouth to mouth. All right. This if you would suck, can't you suck anything? <laughs> As I'm eating, I go like, the whole Italian as, I'm, as I'm like eating like a pork roll, <laughs> I'm eating. I'm like growing up like pork roll, and you're like, Dude, yeah, you will. You will eat anything. I mean, you okay. me off now because we did a whole episode about how you eat expired food. And you're over here on your fucking high horse, little Miss Pris Eddie McGowan from Philly. Well, come on, come on. What are we getting out here? What are we getting out? Here? I don't know. You eating fucking seven day old tuna fish? You don't want to waste food. You want you want to? Uh, I don't want to talk about I my personal I mouth it. behaviors I did it today. Just before we came over, my wife uh, made like a turkey sandwich. She microwaved it. I don't know why. Oh, I'm gonna vomit. So you want to talk about vomiting? <laughs> microwave a turkey, a cold deli turkey sandwich. She, well, they do it. The, yeah, talk to your they wife. Get the cheese. Uh, that's what they do at the deli. When you ask them for a hot, they put it in there and they microwave it for like 20 seconds. Anyway, so it was like a little a broke Quiznos. Yeah, it's like a broke Quiznos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, it, I'll tell you what though, they have a really good steak torta though. <laughs> I mean, I I would I like go, a good like Mexican torta. I would put torta. Up some fucking bodega sandwiches above a lot of delis that claim to be the shit. By the way, I, I just read some. something the other day about ultra processed food, and I'm very worried. Like it's all that I eat. It's like every I was going down a list. I'm like, this is everything that I eat. <laughs> I'm like I don't know what to eat anymore. Like, do I really have to like have like a, a twenty dollar steak every night now? Like, what? I mean, no, but I'm sure you can squeeze in a vegetable or a fruit. Oh, I eat a couple of those. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, or a salad of. But some it's sort. like, what do you do in between? It's Not all snack. the in between. <laughs> come on, get we, some we, nuts. What am I just gonna sleep all day? <laughs> get some nuts or some shit. I eat plenty of nuts. Well, then what do you? What do you need a ding dong with the nuts? Like what? Well, no, like a cracker, or a right? pretzels, oh, all the no, stuff. No. Yeah, you can't eat that. You can't stuff. do that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't do it. So you, but back to you eating expired food. So your wife nuked so, a fucking turkey sandwich. And she didn't finish it. It was kind of just like scraps around and I gathered it up <laughs> and put it on a sandwich. But you know what I did? I topped it with some artichokes. Ah, oh, to make it a new sandwich. Mm. Mm-hmm. So and you nice, refreshed like, it. A little stone ground mustard. So it's dude. like when you restore a nice uh, piece of furniture. Yeah. It's leave like, a little of the patina on there. It's like when you see like a, like a Dodge Charger. You yeah, know what I mean? It's, like, all, yeah, it's, it's not all, brand new. It's just restored. It's just been restored. You still got that, like the, the matte black. <laughs> Fucking all the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I got one for you. What do you got? So, you know, I, I still use cars. And one day I'm sitting there, it's summer, it's hot as shit. And uh, the other salesman walks in with this older black gentleman, thin. He's sweating. He's sweating. He's wearing all kinds of crazy shit, too, like jewelry. And, you know, he's dressed too much for the sun. Mm-hmm. So he's sitting at the other table because the other salesman was working. him. he wants to buy this Jaguar, this piece of shit Jaguar we had in the lot. I'm looking at this fucking guy. And I'm thinking, I know this guy. I know this guy. A woman walks in. She's like a light-skinned black woman, way younger than him, uh, and it's for her. And he's like, he's not talking down to her, but he's like talking at her. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he ends up buying the car, uh, and they leave. And I go, hey, that guy looks familiar. And he's like, it's Ike Turner. Oh shit. So Ike Turner had come. I guess he just for the rest of his life toured with different. With hot women uh-huh. as the lead singer to just kind of do the Tina Turner thing. Yeah, you know? right, right, right. And he was in town. I don't know. I don't think he lived in San Diego, but that's where he was at in his life where he was buying luxury cars from the strip club car lot. Wow. And a Jaguar, too, man. Those- oh, and at the time, Jaguar had not been bought by, I think they got bought by Ford now, so they are a little bit more reliable. Yeah. But that car, that's why I was on the lot. You. It cost a, a ton of money to fix, yeah, and they were breaking down constantly. Constantly, but he was more about the flash, of course. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all it needed to do was. And then he came back and he brought a bunch of signed pictures for a, to get a better deal. Oh, uh huh. But I just remember thinking, like, how surreal is this that I am working in this lot attached to the worst strip club in history. <laughs> you can't use the toilet in here. Like, Ike Turner couldn't even take a piss if he wanted to do there. He'd have to go in the back behind like I did. So could you like hear did. the music, like, while you were, like, selling it, like, when you were signing somebody up for a car? Could you hear, like, do, 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 
do, do, what do you, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You shared a wall. Yeah. <laughs> you, candy up next. And it would be so loud during the day, and you could hear like the muffle of the DJ. Yeah. The best would be the guys going in, because those kind of dudes. That's where you realize there's a whole other world during the day oh, happening. Oh, daytime strip club guys? Because I was young oh, then. I didn't yeah, yeah. know, like, right. you think of strip clubs, you're I remember it was right around the era where stripping became, started to become fashionable. Like, now strip strip clubs are mainstream. There yeah. are women now that feel That's completely true. comfortable going into strip clubs. or You know, uh-huh. it's a whole new world. And I was coming into it right when Britney Spears had done a bunch of like very ultra sexual things for the era. Uh-huh, so all these uh-huh. new girls who were definitely not going to be stripping 10 years ago. Right. You, know, you had to be pretty hardcore because it was a, a rough scene to be a stripper. It still is in a lot of places, but not like it used to be. Dude, there was this place in Philly we used to go to. <laughs> it what was closed. It called? Uh, what was it called? Uh, we got a joint called Dirty Dance. And that is, it's, it's a fucking staple oh, i gotta look it up i can't remember the name now but they closed at 5 p.m <laughs> like they were only open at during the day <laughs> that's a weird business decision. Oh, dude and it was all like longshoremen and um god damn that was um i remember uh a girl did a thing on my bot on a beer bottle to, like squat and i was just like i just bought that <laughs> I didn't. You still I'm, drank the beer. No, right? no, I did not. No way. I once threw this uh, <laughs> fake bachelor party. Um, I won a comedy contest, and I was probably like 22, 23. And the the prize when you won, they gave you a room inside the hotel that the oh. contest was at. Uh huh. So I set this party up. I would met a guy at the comedy store after the show some audience member and he's like i'm the pussy coordinator he entered this fucking guy and he introduced himself to me like that <laughs> the pussy, the pussy you know i'm 22 so i think that stuff's kind of funny still so i'm like oh that's hilarious blah 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 i mean he goes yeah you know if you ever need any girls for parties let me know it's what i do so i was like all right i gather up this is before the era where comedians who felt good about themselves were doing stand up. It was all uglier, oh, oh, right, nerdy, right. not yeah, yeah. getting pussy men. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, being the humanitarian I am, Ed, I gather all these guys up, about 15, 20 guys. I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. This win is not my win. This is our win. We're all going to throw money in. We're going to use this room and we're going to get two strippers. <laughs> And they're like, they're all about it. I call up the pussy coordinator guy. He's like, no problem. <laughs> we get in this room. It's a double, right? Mm-hmm. We're fucking putting the beds against the walls, moving the bed frames because we want more floor space for the dance. <laughs> I mean, we're getting it, and all the nerves are getting real aerodynamic about it. Some guys like moving it and hooking it to the wall. It's a whole thing. Two girls come in. They're doing all kinds of beer bottle tricks. Uh-huh. At one point, they took a banana, put it inside, and shot it out, and I ate the banana. This is why <laughs> I have to drink the beer. Uh, and as I pick it up, someone goes, are you going to eat that? And I go, I don't know. It's been on the floor. And, and my buddy goes, <laughs> yeah, that's what the problem is. It's been on the floor. <laughs> oh my God. I'm a disgusting person. That's so funny that you're like, I don't know. The floor is not. It's people, been the floor. People have their shoes on. People walking. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I would, you know, we were in Vegas. Uh, I was in Vegas for a bachelor party, and, and I don't know a room. Uh, strippers in the room is not. It's only fun when like somebody like, it, like it's uncomfortable. I I found it. like I'd rather be in a strip club. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah, because you can kind of just go off on your own. Yes. Hanging out with dudes, like there's nothing worse than being like in a strip club and like your knee rubbing up against your buddy. It's just a it's lot like, of ah, testosterone, God. and people don't understand the science behind it. That's why people are so aggressive in strip clubs. You already have a bunch of aggressive men that go to strip clubs, anyways, mm-hmm. for the most part, mm-hmm. and then you add in the fact that they're all horny now, right? And now you're there. The, there's not as many girls as men, so of course someone's gonna feel insecure or I'm or territorial. It's weird in strip clubs. It's very odd. Yeah. You get all those men together horny, it's a weird thing. 
But that that's what I thought of at that job. It's so funny that you worked right next to a strip club. How I mean, often did you go in? I only went there like twice. Because I was meeting them all in the back. Yeah, right. Then it becomes just them. like, yeah, right. You don't need to go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm already yeah. meeting you. And yeah, then yeah. they're always coming over... Saying what's up to us. Right. Some of them yeah. cars, you know, it's like a... Yeah, like they... The fact that you don't go to the strip club is more... You're a different... You're not the, one of the regular, like, just fucking schmoes walking in the door. I used to be able to <laughs> meet a lot of... I dated a lot of girls by just meeting them at the job. I think now um, too many men try to do that, so women are a lot smarter about that. Like dating on the job? Dating people yeah, that you I work think, with? Yeah, I you know, now it's think such it a happens. business. It does, but I, I think in different... I've recognized this now because I travel so much. The smaller the city, the vibe, uh, like the the strippers, sometimes you meet them, they're not as, I don't want to say capitalistic, but let's just say, you know, they will talk to you. Oh. They will engage with you. It's not like, like the, they're you like. You go to a strip club here, they're boy. Like there's too many. Per, they're yeah. like dollar per hour. Yeah, the right. The clock like, is running, and yeah, as it should. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm a hooker myself for com- comedy. Sure. I'm not doing more than the time I have to do unless it's like, you know, it's going oh, right. so well. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I know yeah, what the yeah. clock is in your head. Yeah, You're yeah, going. Yeah, every awesome. minute she's talking to me, she's like, that's another 20 bucks I might have just lost. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm not willing to do that. I don't yeah, blame yeah, them for that. But in other cities, it could. It used to be. I know in San Diego when I was young, it was. They. It wasn't like a career. There was no OnlyFans. There was. It wasn't. You couldn't see, like a business plan from stripping beyond the money being in your hand that day. There wasn't as many opportunities. Well, I it was think. Kind of like I feel like like in an, in the nineties, like it was kind of like waiting tables. Yeah, and it was, but it was secretive, which was, it was the worst. Just that, you couldn't like, talk about it. A lot of women didn't talk about it with right. their friends yeah, or family. Yeah. But it was just like, a way, you would go, you would make a bunch of cash, mm-hmm. and then you'd go out afterwards yeah. and spend most of it. Yeah. Like a lot of the after hours places. That's what I'm speaking to. I'm, for everyone out there, I'm speaking because I've actually dated people going through that in different eras of their of of the strip the strip days. So, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, totally. Like Because I remember... Um, like in Philly, like the after hours in Philly, like after hours in Philadelphia is, is like a big thing because the bars close at two in Philly, not like in New York where they stay open to four. So mm-hmm. at like two thirty, there's like a whole like scene happening and like these after hours places. And that's where like strippers would always be. And like <laughs> down in South Philly, it was always um, it was always these fucking jabronis like just like they're like they they act like they're connected but they're asking you to bum twenty dollars you know what i mean it's like just the loserist uh some of the uh we're just the worst when you're and claiming then, your mafia stripes while bumming 20 bucks yeah totally right like it's just uh but it was a wild i mean it was a wild scene like just when you would start talking to a girl and then find out like she was a stripper it would be like oh cool isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah. Do people know. did people used to feel like that when they would say, "Oh, yeah, I'm dating a comedian." <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, when my wife tells people when people from her work find out that I'm a comedian, they're like, "Is he funny?" <laughs> I, I honestly, for the last eight years now, I actively avoid telling yeah, people yeah. what I do. Yeah. Actively, yeah. I have no desire. It's never fun. To it like, used to be fun when i wasn't a real comedian to say i was a comedian yeah right. because right, you're right. like yeah. someone's ide- like i'm able to identify as that to this person and then right. they ask me questions yeah, yeah, yeah when you finally do it becomes a job for you it is the last thing you want to tell anyone there's you a little burger joint down in the village where if you're a comedian they give you half off oh i'll do it for that yeah, but it is still like I I, st- I, lean, <laughs> I lean in and I, and I whisper. You're it. low life enough to get the burger <laughs> and the discount, but too proud to say it out loud what you are. I just don't want somebody, some of the jerk off NYU students behind oh. me to go, oh, you're a comedian. Yeah. Like, I'm just like. Oh, you know what, though? So I, I've been in such a bad mood lately if that I would go down there to, in hopes one of them would say so I hope <laughs> so you just roast just this them. kid I'd make him want to kill himself his whole life's in front of him NYU <laughs> mommy and daddy probably got him in there he runs his mouth at the wrong guy <laughs> little Johnny hangs himself in the dorm room cause he's not tough enough he's not fucking tough enough he deserved it hey, dude, hey how's that scholarship not, feel hey, now I don't give a fuck you like my fucking reel alright one less asshole I have to market to good <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate everybody I 
fucking hate them. I hate anyone that had more than me. I oh. hate anyone that is further ahead of me because of what they had. Oh, I'm in a bad mood, Ed. Oh, see, that's funny. I don't. I don't. I want to torch you. the room. Yeah, I don't get too crazy about that. Just because I already feel like I'm ahead. Well, yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? I already you feel blew like my mind, dude. I already feel you like just I'm blew ahead. My mind. Yeah. You, know you are. I mean? You know what I mean? Like you're it's a just, really Zen dude for not a Zen dude. I'm not a Zen dude. Not at all. No. I'm, you're a very I'm you're very chaos. high anxiety about yeah, certain yeah, things. Totally. Yeah, yeah. You're very scattered. If yeah, you yeah. get like I wouldn't even call it flustered because you get shit done, but there's an aspect of you that is like your head's on fire. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, but it's funny because there is another part of you that I've noticed, which is this part and the part where you're very accepting of things you cannot control and you have a very good perspective. I now, mean, in all fairness, I'm going to do some shit that I haven't made public yet, but there's a lot of anchor in that for me right uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. But I feel like you have a good center over stuff like that. I guess, I, I mean, I don't know that I'm that. I just, I try and remind myself of those things that I, like I'm kind of ahead. You know what I mean? Like I'm kind yeah. of I'm uh, ahead. Well, but at the same, for but, the audience, why? I mean, I think I know. Well, just why, because but... I was like such a crazy drug addict. Oh, 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 you know what I mean? Like I was such a crazy yeah. drug addict for so long. Yeah. And, like so many, like I, you know, I have friends that are that are dead. Yeah. That like, <clears throat> like you've seen it so far, so up close. Right, right, right. I, I feel like to now be like married and like you know just have like a, a, a good life. life. I feel like I'm ahead, but at the same time, I try not to like. Um, but so let's because I don't like career, to rest though. on my laurels either. Is that a, how you say well, that? No, well, it's, laurels? Okay. Is it laurels? laurels? So you got it right. I've used that in front of you like three times. A, so you know that, right? What's that? I've used the word laurels in front of you three times <laughs> since I've known you. And every time I've ever said it, you've at, you said, wow, what a word. Oh, do I oh, do that? Oh, that's like a five dollar. Like you just get to make do a it? big deal out of it. I do, yeah, And yeah. then you're asking now whether or not. <laughs> it's like been in your, it's like been bouncing around in your brain. <laughs> is laurels, is that the right word? <laughs> like one side or the other, like that old screensaver and you're just plucking it out of the sky. <laughs> Still unsure. <laughs> Does this work? I love how you wait till the mic's on to ask yeah, whether or not it's fucking a word. So good. Uh, I'm okay, but career-wise, you you don't get irritated. I'm more irritated than I've ever been, but I'm all I've always been irritated about how things shake out. Are you? Well, here's more the thing. Like, so I do get pissed off about things, but then I realize, like, for example, like the fact that now comedy is like you have to like post so much content and this and that and like I get annoyed by that like why can't I just like be working do it. on my set you yeah. know what I mean the and jokes yeah like I also have to do like all of this other stuff right and you get pissed off in comics we all bitch about it right but at the same time it's like how many times <clears throat> now have I like done a bit made the reel and then as I'm like making like the caption for the reel I'm like oh that's a tag you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, all like yeah, all yeah. of like the hard parts. So you're saying that still... everything in it provides something to the final result. It can. Yeah. Even, all the parts that are hard still are part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like even, you know what I mean? Like it didn't used to be there, but now it is. But you know what? It's still part of it. So I could still learn from it. I could still gain from it. I could still. That's a good point. I, it, I It's the only way that I, I can look at it without going insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a little bit. It's a little uh, respite, respite. It's a respite. I don't know if that's right. No. Let's <laughs> <You could> try. <laughs> <laughs> but Laurels was good. All Laurels, right. you nailed. I don't I know nailed. why. <laughs> respite. It's I don't a, know why you kept swinging for the fences on that one. You made contact. Yeah, I had to go. Yeah, no, I had to go. I mean, I had. I... <laughs> There's this really great. I keep rewatching that Last Dance documentary about the oh, final season Jordan? of the Bulls. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Like, I think it's the best docu series ever done in history. That. Because of, and this is everything, every docu-series, every documentary you watch that you love, the reason why you love it is the filmmaker not only had a great story etched out, but he had archived footage. The more archived footage, the better the doc, and they filmed that whole fucking year. He would, They were allowed to film everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was incredible. But yeah. there's a, a saying in it that I have, I can't ever forget that I never let go of, and it's... Uh, Phil Jackson tells the team after they win their first one, you are only a success in the moment of the success. Yeah, totally. I love that. It doesn't count after that. I love that. that. I love that. So yeah. that's how I look at yeah. what I do. And I don't know why, if I can look at it that way, I get so perturbed. That definitely is a word. 
Yeah, no, it I'm, is. I'm familiar like, with I, that I was one. Th- I was thinking <laughs> of like, you know, we're talking about this uh, this show I did this weekend. Really cool show, cool vibe. But you know when you see a room filled with, here's how I know I'm not where I want to be. Because I get so fucking giddy and excited when I see a room of more than 50 people and all of my demographic. So attractive-ish, cool-ish, 30 to 45-year-old people Mm -hmm. in a room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how I know I'm not a success. Because I get so excited when I see that because I don't see it that often. And successful comedians see rooms of 50 plus regularly. Uh They see that demographic regularly. That's their demographic because they're either in well-known comedy clubs or there's that fucked with me when I realized the reason why this I hate that I'm so excited that I can't just be about the moment, Uh you know, Uh like just like I am anywhere else. Yeah, right. I do a hundred something shows a year headline probably 60% of those if not more uh-huh. and that shouldn't get me go that it's not like a fun excitement it's like uh it's like you've been eating fucking you know out of the can and then all of a sudden someone makes a meal i think that there's nothing wrong with being excited about it dude. not excited though it's not it's a wrong word i'm using giddy whatever i shouldn't be that hyped for that shit i should be able to be balanced about it if i was seeing it more I could go in there with a straight ahead approach. I guess. I mean, I, I don't. I you think I, I'm harping on it too much. Yeah. No, I don't know why. I don't know what the. Um, think I hate myself. I think you're looking for a reason to get. Uh, yeah, I think you're looking for something that's nothing. I mean, you got excited about it like a cool gig. Dude, I'm like, on a whole another. Yeah, level right. Like right, you yeah. just yeah, just just enjoy the gig, man. It's a spot. It's like a. Listen, here's the other thing. Well, here's what I'm trying you to get the, to. You took the and subway it, to get there. You didn't have to fucking. Do, you know what I mean? Like you didn't have to drive. Well, what I'm saying is, I get up there, like I'm very grateful. But now I put so much pressure on the gig to go well. That's what I'm talking uh, about. And then I get up there, uh, and it's no one's fault. It's a fine room. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. not necessarily set up to have people be like a, a hundred percent comedy audience. So what you're saying? Oh, okay, you didn't. I, so now I was the getting back end, there. Yeah, the I was just going the long yeah, way for yeah. the viewers. Uh-huh. But the back end is I put so much pressure on myself. And then the set doesn't and, go well. And it yeah, went yeah, yeah. fine. Right. But it doesn't go. But if I would have stayed balanced, I yeah, that right. would have not bothered me that it went fine. Gotcha. Yeah. I got you. Okay. I have that. I have that. Totally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have that. That's but, what I thought. But uh, yeah, everybody. Yeah, I think everybody has that though. But the problem I was having is that. When it doesn't I go as great as you want it to go. But that's a separate issue. The issue I had was that the reason why I wasn't able to accept how it was going, because I didn't mess anything up. Mm-hmm. You know, I was I was on point. Mm-hmm. I mean, rhythmically, it, if you're not doing well, a big part of it is your rhythm's been interrupted because of something. So mm-hmm. obviously my rhythm where, where isn't, wasn't where it needed to be to get the job done. Uh, it just was what it was. That didn't bother me. The, what bothered me was is that I was so fucking amped and put mm-hmm. so much pressure mm-hmm. That I went up there and I couldn't just roll. You know, you roll with it. You know what my, have I told you this? My new mantra before I get on stage. You get angry. No. Well, that's what I do. I get angry. You get angry. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, but you might have told me in lieu of what I was saying. saying. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I do this. I go, right before, like, right before I go up, like, under my breath, I go, fuck these pieces of shit. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> But that's so funny. Like that's the ultimate respect to the audience, right? Like they matter that much sometimes, even though they you're at your best when they don't. Right. That it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like it's a weird like like little trick that I have to do to myself right before yeah. I go up. And I'm oh, like, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. these pieces. And of it's funny because it wasn't even about any individual in the room. It was about I made it about my success or lack thereof, and that is. A recipe for obvious disaster, <laughs> you know. Like, you no, know, even if I was doing pretty well, which I do think I am uh, for the most part, uh, but like in my eyes, well, I know I would find a reason why that was a good enough either. It, it's a never-ending cycle of 
Yeah, but it's hard know. though, dude. I mean, you're, yeah. you're just you're always going to be going. You know what I mean? It's 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 always going to be going in a direct. You know what I mean? The direction is the direction that it goes in is just that's the art itself, right? It's like it's how it's going. It's just you the fucking set now. I feel like I sound like a fucking pillowcase or some shit. I don't know, man. The I mean, art is the well, journey and all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Give I don't more, know. Uh, give yeah. more mantras out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm just <laughs> What's trying What's another to, mantra I'm before just, you get I'm your just, car and you <laughs> blow your fucking oil cap? What's that mantra? Dude, dude, man, this car, this fucking car. I broke a, uh, I was parked, uh, I had a gig uh, Saturday night down in the village. I, I'm pulling out and as I'm pulling out, pop, I hear it. I go over a bottle. I crack a fucking Corona bottle. Oh. It was like right underneath my tire. I'm like, mother, who People the fuck losers, puts a dude. fucking bottle under a tire? And then I get out, I look, the glass is everywhere. I'm like, all right, well, I, I can't get away without driving over it. And as I'm driving, now, I have all the windows down and I just hear crunch for at least a, a, like a block, just crunch, crunch. I'm like, it's all in the tire. So today, before I came over, I called it. I was like, uh, I said to the garage guy, because I, you know, I have to park that car in the garage, because over there is no parking yeah. where I'm at. I called the garage guy. I go, hey, uh, you do me a favor. Can you go check and see if that tire's flat? <laughs> I was like, I'm just, I'm like, if this tire is flat, I'm just, I'm selling this fucking yeah. car. I can't. That's, not, that's yeah. not the car, though. You just bad luck. Or me. I mean, I did crack the windshield. with you do the, a lot of yeah, dumb shit. I have dumb, yeah. The windshield. Actually, the windshield was only my dumb one. The, but you've driven with me. I'm a. You, You're a distracted guy. So when Josh is driving, when I'm driving with Josh, I can't even tell you. I would say, what do you say? Like forty percent of the time, you're holding on to the. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> How? I, what's it's the not percentage? That you're a bad driver as much as you're doing fifty. Like you, if you're not absolutely one hundred percent focused, it's a wrap. It's yeah. like, uh, oh, like, ah, you're like, I missed a fucking <laughs> exit. You're going across medians. <laughs> And the thing's telling you, and I think he sees it while he's talking to me or while I'm talking to him. I can't talk and drive. And then he... I can't talk and drive, dude. I, I've ended up... I've missed so many like yeah. exits just talking and driving. I almost want to stay quiet. Like, I <laughs> almost yeah. save my conversation with you until it's like a 50-mile stretch. <laughs> That's how like they're like an old married couple. I like look at the shit. If there's it's a lot if there's of like directions. five turns, yeah, 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 I'm going to be over wait. here, bro. Just wait until he gets this. <laughs> hey, what job do you got today? What do I got? All right. Uh, we talked about living well, lady. Do we talk about living well, lady? The is it the gym? Yeah. Let's do your janitor. We already did a janitor one. Do the oh. wings. What about one? the wing job? Will you do the wings? you the oh, you already did the one with the wings, right? Oh, wing chi- chi- Yeah, wing wah. Oh, no, we didn't talk about that. That was on the last episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. my very first job. Wing uh, wah. All right, yeah, do that wing-wah. one. Do that one. Uh, my, fir- <laughs> my very first job. What's the storefront look like of a wing wah? Oh, it was it like wasn't a, a chain, right? It was just some. It was in a strip mall. It looked just, just like any kind of uh, okay. Chinese restaurant. You see, like, the, you know, it's got this, the standard stock menu pictures, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, and it's got, like, that, you know, that old font, right? Wing wah. That big, like, uh, like yellow kind of like uh, kung fu. And I remember font. you saying it was filthy. Oh, it was, okay. All right. Well, they didn't. I just t- want to set the set the tone here. Yeah, I mean, it was clean. And it was your first front job. I was twelve, dude. <laughs> I was twelve years old. I was you wear like dishes. a hairnet on and shit. I, what's that? You, they made you wear a hairnet. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't wear a hairnet. I didn't wear a hairnet. I, I don't even remember how I got the job. Because it was up the street from my dad's, where my dad was living, my grandpa lived. And my dad was living with my grandpa. I'm just like envisioning you smoking grits with these Chinese dudes in the back. No, 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 no. They did not let me... um, Interact with them? No, not at all. Uh, (laughs) They spoke to me. They spoke at me. No one ever spoke to me except for the the owner-manager guy. The one person spoke to me. Everybody else just yelled, boy. And... (laughs) Boy! (laughs) Yeah, totally. And then we'd just rapid fire in, in Korean... And I would just be like, and it would just be like pointing, and I was like, okay. I remember I got sent down to the to the basement. I didn't even know what I was looking for. I got sent down Why'd to the basement. Go? They they were like, ah, and they're yelling at me, and I and I was like, all right, I'll just go down there. And I'm walking around. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to get. And then I come around this corner, and there is the oldest Korean man I've ever seen just chopping onions. <laughs> In the basement? In the basement with just the the biggest table of onions, and he's just chopping onions. I come around a corner, and it just, oh, it just hits me. No just, glasses. No, he's just, no, no tears. 
Dude, that's how long he's been doing he's it. He's been doing it for, up for like a century. He's been down there cutting these Why onions. Why did he put that poor guy? I don't know. It was in the summer. It was. Cra- it was in the summer. Oh, it was insane, dude. dude. It was so cra- just this weird onion man. There's the onion guy, all, onion old man in the corner, right? And I come around the corner. I was like, and I was like, uh, and he just pointed, and that's where another I, guy was. <laughs> <laughs> I just went up with like I just took a bucket of something because I was like I guess he knows what I do and I brought up like a bucket of chopped onions. <laughs> just walked by a cockfight. <laughs> yeah, this guy's down there gambling. <laughs> Cigarettes hanging out. <laughs> the fucking onion man with a bit. that might haunt my dreams dude he, he i still think about it. like the, the you still look, think about the onion dude, man dude it was so uh it was just so like ghostly almost like i don't even oh he probably lives somewhere down there too or like here's the here's like the ghost story of it he was never there he was never there yeah, Large, I mean, March, yeah, yeah, yeah right totally right yeah uh that's no. fucking terrifying your parents let you work there and these you oh, my parents till- were proud of me that i had a job are you kidding me? Yeah. What about when you told him the tales of the Ed- Korean Onion Man? Oh, I didn't tell him about that. I didn't tell him stories. <gasps> what if it was like you're just here at a at your door. And it's the Korean Onion Man looking at you eating an onion. He's eating a whole onion like an apple. Just that, like he has the bucket. <laughs> just a fucking slice. <laughs> He's just down there chopping onions, man. That's fucking crazy. Uh, that job was like, uh, I, I guess I had that for that that summer. They got shut down, you said, right? They got shut down by the health department. It was filthy in there. Dude. I can't believe that. Whatever. The guy happened. would take the screen they doors seem to off. Be up to code. He, the, the guy would take the screen doors. So off. just fly central. Just flies everywhere, dude. And it was like, why? How much more air are you getting in there? For the, there were full screen doors, and he would take the screen doors what? off. Oh my god. Yeah, it was disgusting. Um, but yeah, so I had that. Uh, I used to make twelve bucks, uh, twelve bucks a night, and then eighteen dollars on a Saturday night. Damn, <sighs> yeah. Dude. What'd you buy with that money? Just weed. weed. Yeah. Yep. Smokes. Marlboros. Marlboros and, and weed and sense of mill. What sense of mill? Sense of millia. Red haired sense. No. Yeah, that's that? the old. That's old. Like that. That used to be like the skunk weed. Red haired oh. sense. Red haired sense Amelia. See, I only have bought weed in the era of dispensary, so I don't yeah. know anything about no, no, no. the dirt. That's, that that was like sell. The, that was old dirt weed, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean that was like good dirt weed, but yeah, I mean anybody that's listening to that, anybody that knows red haired sense was probably in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you smoke, you hear. Dun, 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 dun. There must be some out of way out of here. <laughs> Man, the smoke to the tea. <laughs> Keep smoking that shit. Uh, it's like it's straight out of platoon. With fucking Willem Dafoe. Fucking choppers. You're Willem Dafoe's choppers like the fucking blowing the smoke through the gun. <laughs> yeah, that shit made me fucking paranoid, man. I was a paranoid What's the little. Most paranoid shit you ever done smoking weed. Like what have you physically done? Well, the most paranoid I've ever been was on LSD. Uh, did we ever tell you this show? The, about, uh, was it the Grateful Dead? Maybe. So, all right. I'm at the Grateful. We drive up from Philly to Nassau Coliseum, right? Which is in Long Island. Yeah. Uh, which is no longer a, a venue. But so we're in Nassau. We, we don't have tickets. <clears throat> we have like a bunch of hits of acid. These Green Dragon hits, Blotter hits. And we take them in the car, and now we're walking around. Two of our friends have tickets, and then it's me and my buddy don't have tickets. So we're, like, trying to find tickets. I buy a ticket, and he's like, oh, I'm like, good, dad, we just have to get you a ticket. We got him a ticket, and now we're like, yeah. And as soon as we got that, like, fourth ticket, this dirty hippie, we had crossed some highway. We were at this pizza shop where we bought them. This dirty hippie pops out of these bushes with three nitrous balloons. <laughs> yes, you did tell me. Keep going. Yeah. Three nitrous balloons. The balloons, and, I remember. And um, we're like, yeah. And we start huffing these balloons down. And I, like, huff it like a crackhead. Uh-huh. I just, <laughs> just, the whole thing, instead of just enjoying it, like, take it just, like, what's nitrous, it to your brain? Nitrous yeah. is like, uh, yeah, you get that, like, okay. it's, it's like a nitrous high. But, like, if you suck it too fast, like any kind of inhalant, you'll black out. So that's what happened to me. I black out. I come to, and now I'm like peeking 
on like three hits of LSD. So I don't know what just happened. You know what I'm coming to. Oh, this is where you're out of your body, right? You're yeah, telling me. Yeah. So the next thing I know, my one friend is moving real slow and my other friend's moving real fast. And I'm like, and I'm like, I realize I'm seeing this from above myself. Holy shit. I'm outside of myself for like, ah, like six seconds. And then it just all like fades. Dude, right now in my life, that feels like a dream. I, I would love. It was I, fantastic. But what was the paranoia part about it? Well, so then for the rest of the night, I was convinced that I was uh, six seconds behind everything. Like I was a different, like I came out of my body, I came back into myself and I lost that six seconds. I think you're right, I think you are. <laughs> I'm not even fucking around. I think you are. Because I'm always like a, just a well, little, a little late. Like I'm all a little directions, late. you're always a little six seconds behind the direction. Uh -huh. You're a little, you ever hear of, uh, <laughs> here's how my wife does like me, but also hates me. So I've been, reading this book about, I've been telling you about it, and now I'm so embarrassed, I'm gonna say it on the air before we have to close, but it's a book called Dr. Young's graphic novel, and I've been calling him Dr. Jung. Well, Jung was a psychologist though, right? <laughs> yeah, but his name is Young, it's, but the, the J is like a Y. Uh huh. And Lauren never told me that, and I've been talking to her on about this book, and she was like, after a, I already talked to her about it, and I go, am I saying this guy's name wrong? And she finally goes, yeah, it's actually uh, young, but you know, I just didn't want to make you feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but he talks about the equinox of like uh, March twenty first. The Earth is at its full rotation, uh -huh. and half it's an equal part night, equal part day. Uh -huh. It's the most equal it could be. Okay, but because of the way the Earth is spinning, it's it, it's a little off. In fact, every 72 years, it's a full degree off from where it started. Okay. It's pretty insane. And that's okay. like you. So I think LSD takes us to a place where it actually one self with the earth. Interesting. That's what I think happened to you. Interesting. I think you're at the equinoxus, they call it. Equinoxus? Yeah, that's the actual term for it, I believe. It's not the equinox? Or the equ it's extra letters equinoxus? on it. I'm going to go equinoxus. <laughs> Equinox is real, but there's right. the, the phrasing of what it's called is the oh, equinox. That's the stasis of like when you're in like a yes. stasis uh, point. You're yes. In the, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. The equinox. So you're saying I was in the equinox. I think you were there. I was there. I, was I think the you were equinoxus. flowing. I think you were one with it. Yeah. yeah. You can follow me at Josh Accardo. <laughs> Go to joshaccardo.com for any tour dates. Eddie and I will be in Seattle. We're doing five shows, so make sure you buy your tickets for that. If you're out there, we can't wait to, to see you. Follow me at Ed McGowan Comedy. We'll see you guys again next week. Thanks. Sir. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.